the ball podcast i'm your host jonathan jones and today uh i am I'm, I'm glad to bring you the founder this of man. king the king athletic training and mentoring Boy. this man's a mentor this man's a recruiting coach and he's impacting the lives of many youths on the day in and day out basis i, I want to go ahead and welcome in Coach Adam McCann. Coach, how we doing today? Doing good, man. How about yourself? Man, I'm 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 doing well. I'm doing well. Like my dad says, I'm on top and going high. So <laughs> there we go. Yep. I, I have a saying that people uh people are like, oh, that's a way, way to look at it. Another day in paradise. Well, whatever paradise is today, that's what <laughs> I got another yeah. day in it. So yeah, man. I think I mean I think that's the way that we we have to look at life. If if we don't. Um, you know, then we're just going to put ourselves in a challenging state, and then it's, it's only going down from there. It's, it's, all, it's only going down from there, Coach. Yes, sir. Totally agree. But, Coach, I, I, I really wanted to bring you on because I've just seen, like, the way that you've utilized the Twitter platform, and I just got connected with you on Instagram. I follow, I follow King to King. Yeah, on Instagram. appreciate it. Uh, but, I, but I've seen how you really used and leveraged this platform just to help it's to help these these kids get this get opportunities and, and, and get more eyes. How did that come about? Talk a little bit about about that and a little bit more about what you do. Uh, so what I just did was, you know, I just went where the coaches was at, you know, and and virtually put a seat right there and and put myself in the middle of a room and um, just really just used the platform. What you said, what it is, you know, we got to get our kids to have eyes. Our area of Western New York don't have eyes on it. Um, right now is a lot of kids are getting eyes um, because of some of the athletes I have and some of the athletes other people in this area is training. Um, you know, I'm, you know, one of the guys helping out with recruiting and, and doing that stuff. And I had a very successful uh, recruiting class last year and my 2021 and 2022 class is looking pretty bright. So that's how we're just using the platform just to have the coaches be like, wow, you know, I've seen so many coaches so many times. Oh, wow, this is in Buffalo, New York. <laughs> like, yeah, this, these kids exist in Buffalo, New York. So, um, you know, that's just how I'm using it and doing it right now. Yeah, and, and as you're saying that, I, I'm just thinking, and I know typically, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I know typically, like, football is really known for, for being, like, in the southern sector of the United States more so yep. than, than New York. If we're not talking about the Jets or, like, the Giants. But yep. you know, how, so, so why is that that you're – like you're you're coaching there, like of, of all places. You know, this is where I was born and raised at, so I was born into it. And you know, I, I did did at time want to, you know, want to was thinking about going to Charlotte, but um, the way that the community is now starting to get the eyes um, and attention of the coaches, I think you know this is this is where God put me at. So you know, that's how I started. King and King was 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 God showing it to me and God putting it in front of my face. Um, so if he tells me tomorrow I got to move to Texas, whatever I have in my bank account, uh, I just got to go move to Texas, you know. So he's the one that started all this, you know, saying. So, you know, I'm just using – he he allowed me to use my passion and platform to uh, to help the kids in this area. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit more about, like, the, the influence that – the influences that, that you've had in your life. Because, I, because I've played basketball, and, I, and to this day I remember every coach that I've had, if it be a trainer – or if it be, you know, my school coach or, you know, summer club team coach. But talk, talk a little bit about, like, some of the coaches that, that influenced you in, in such a major way to where now you're doing this work that you're, that you're doing. Oh, uh, man, when I was younger, you know, the guys I played with in high school, you know, my one, my one uh, teammate from, I think, like, third grade, Pernell Lindsey, we played basketball since then and played in high school. You know, in high school, I played like one year of football. I played that one year of football with my brother uh, to help him get kickstarted. He was like, man, I know you don't play football, you know, but, you know, for organized sports, but come over here and help us out. Um, so I helped him out and got my brother started. You know, my coach in, in high school, uh, Coach Dade, uh, he played at North Carolina with Michael Jordan. Um, so I had a, had a pretty 
tough time in high school with practices. Practices were ran like UNC uh, for basketball, and then in football, man, they, uh, it was conditioning. If it wasn't conditioning, it was conditioning. And if it wasn't conditioning, it was it was conditioning. So, you know, th that coach right there put me through the loop. Um, and then after high school, um, you know, I didn't get the scholarship I was supposed to because um, my high school coach didn't send out the tape and stuff like that. And that's how I started King the King. Um, eventually we'll get into that. But, you know, after there, you know, a coach, Tyree Parker, which is now the head coach of the high school I'm going to be coaching at, uh, Maritime, he put me underneath his wing and was like, hey, you can come and coach for our organization. It was a peewee football team. You know, he gave me a chance. Uh, the head coach was somebody I knew um, on the pile, uh, EMAC. And I just started with special teams, from special teams to, like, you know, just being a defense coordinator with um, a guy named Shu. You know, for, you know, we brag about this all the time when me and him see each other. We went nine quarters without a first down, giving up on our defense. Oh, wow. And that was with, like, 11- and 12-year-olds. So, if, you know, if I ever had got the chance, I knew I was going to make it. But, uh, you know, things happened. And then I finally got into high school football um, three years ago, you know, because I was coaching Pee Wee football for, like, 12 years. Um, and I just knew that my impact was, was to help the guys – you know, get to get to college, you know. Um, and then I went to high school. God blessed me with a job at St. Joe's uh, for three years as a private high school. Um, and now I'm at Maritime, you know, everything works out for the better. You know, our head coach was let go, um, you know, because they just didn't see eye to eye with the administration. But, you know, our, our group of coaches is just amazing, you know, but we, you know, Coach Tyree Parker took me in. He's been begging me to come over there for like three years, you know, like friendly begging, you know, not like, you know, hands and knees, but, you know, he, he telling me, man, you know, you got to come over here with family. You got to come over here with family. So you know, I finally got that chance to do it. He's, he's definitely been a staple of my career, um, you know, and recently, you know, the last two years, I got to give a lot of my credit to my mentor. He was never my coach, but he was my, he's my mentor, uh, Andre Powell of Team Pass in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. He's just helped me be become a better person, better trainer. You know, if I post some some crappy training videos, he called me up and said, "Hey, man, take that down. You hurting you hurting your kids recruiting help." You know, um, so those are the coaches that's impacted me, man. And then my high school coach that I was at, um, you know, Coach Derek Landry, he helped me out to be a better man on and off the field, and you uh, know, he coached off the field. It wasn't always about wins and losses. We could lose every game, and but if we get twelve kids to college, or if we get twelve kids to change their um, thinking pattern of you know color or race, or if we could help those kids um, become better men, we won. So it didn't matter about the championships. You, know, you want to win, don't get me wrong, but yeah. um, so those four guys, like they just impacted me from when I first started to to now, still to this day. Yeah, I mean, I think that's probably one of the biggest pieces in coaching is is understanding that because uh, I was reading a book by well, I was listening to it on audio book, um, yeah. but it's by Darian Darian K Roberts, and okay. I, I think it's called The Audible, and then he talks about like the coaching tree, and ultimately like who who you all impact by being under their their tutelage or being under their their leadership. Yeah. Um, so, so now I'm just curious to hear from you, coach, like when it comes down to the, the, the aspect, cause like you were saying, the focus was helping, helping kids, not just on the field, but off the field. And, and, and you were saying that just like before we got online, uh, and I think you also said it earlier, but just the aspect of, you don't want to just help them on the field, but you want to extend to outside of that to making them a better man like how, how did you determine it was time to to do that or to incorporate that in into what you were already doing uh when I started this whole thing you know um I, I was just I watched a lot of Shark Tank you know and Shark Tank always says find a problem and and, and put a put a patch over it then you then you have a winning formula so you know my passion is is to help athletes so a lot of our athletes don't know you know, unfortunately, they look good on, on, on videos and on Saturday. Some of our athletes just don't know how to talk with coaches. They don't know what, what to ask with coaches because they get intimidated. You know, so I, 
I, you know, wanted to break that down for them. You know, then I, then I just found a hole of, you know, them being, a lot of them don't have mentors. So every time we train, we get, we get mentoring. So it's not all about, you know, you know, high, high knees and fast twitches and, oh, you go to this college, but you can go to that college, but don't have no, no mannerisms and no, no ethic, you know, no, 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 no back, basic background, you know, and not been taught because I came up and my father had left me. So I didn't know those things. Most of our athletes are one parent household mm. and you can only get one skill set from whoever you got. You know, I was raised by my mom. So I missed a lot of the men uh, in my life uh, and those teachings. So I was like, you know, a lot of our athletes in this area just don't have that. So let's give them the off the field teaching, uh, you know, how to be a man, how to carry this. So uh, how, to, how to be one of those guys that's, you know, let's after the game, if we do make it to college, let's sign 100 autographs. You know, if we if we make it to the pros, let's stay after and sign 1,500 shirts if we got to. You know, because it's, it's it got to be taught. If it's not taught, you see a lot of videos of guys walking by. And my first thing is, were they taught to stop and appreciate the people that got them there? Mm. Because at the end of the day, when I get to the NFL, if no one buys my jerseys, if no one wants me, my endorsement is not there. I'll make my NFL paycheck, but the love for me and the need for me is not needed. And that's, that's a bigger impact. Uh, my grandfather always taught me is I could talk to a hundred thousand people and only one person could pay attention. But that one person that I caught, he go help a million people. So I helped a million and one people. Mm. So, you know, it's, it's about the impact after sports with the guys that we coach and train um, at King to King, you know, because it's their God-given talent. Let's just be honest. You know, I tell them all the time, it's your God-given talent, and I'm just going to help you off the field of how to uh, make you a brand. And now, right now, with the NCAA talking about eventually paying these guys, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 now they know how to brand themselves. I got four or five of my athletes that, that's like, hey, how do I brand myself? Was this what all the stuff you were talking about? I got a sophomore right now that's gonna brand himself, and he he could possibly make five hundred thousand dollars a year before he gets to the NFL. You know, and I think that's a more important, you know, than the X's and O's sometimes as a coach, a high school coach. Definitely, because I think the name of the game, with it being longevity, and then with you know the principles and the tools that you're teaching them and you're giving them, they can use before they make it to the NFL, they can use it after the NFL. Because, yep. you know, with, with uh, j just with the facts, the, the average person, if that, you know, may play two and a half years in the NFL. Because everybody's yeah. not going to have, you know, like a Tom Brady 20-year career. Oh, oh. Uh, no, that comes once a lifetime. <laughs> and, and, it's, it, and, and it's just, it's, it's crazy to see, and e even more crazy to think about, but I, but I realized it the other day because, I don't I don't know what it is sometimes, but something just jogs a memory of somebody in my head, and I'm like, where I wonder where this guy is in NFL, and they're not there anymore because yeah. you know the career only only lasts only lasts so long. So, so talk a little bit about that, coach, because you said like about about people asking you about about the branding. What what do you think about the like 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 about the whole brand image and likeness movement? What do you what do you, what do you, what are your thoughts on that? I, I think that um, I've always been a big advocate you know, off my athletes to, to get paid and be branded. Um, this is coming from three years ago. Uh, one of my biggest athletes was, was my, my uh, nephew, Key Michael Clark. We always talked about branding. If you make it or not, you, you, you got a one last name, you got to brand it. Mm -hmm. So you, no matter what, you got to brand it. You got to make as much money off it as possible. And when you get to colleges, these guys are making about about a million dollars off of each athlete. Let's just be honest. You know, if you win a championship game, the winner gets what twenty five million dollars for winning the game. You know, the school sometimes. You know, you got you got jerseys. You know, you got you got some stadiums that got one hundred and ten thousand people that you can fit in. You know, you got some some schools they charge for the tailgating areas. Uh, some schools, you know, they, you know, you go into the fan shop. Some of these F, some of these guys, they go to the go to the game and they don't have a jersey on. So then guess what? They gotta go to the fan shop, buy a hat, buy a shirt. That's a hundred dollars. 
Imagine if 110,000 people do that every Sunday, Saturday. So just say 50,000 people do that. That's a lot of money. And you get, what, four to seven games home, you know, depending on, you know, the conference games and all that. And then you go to a bowl game and then you go to a, a, a the conference bowl game. You know, you, you're playing 12 games to 13 games times that about just just be nice. Let's just say, what, $5 million? Then the bowl game winner gets about $20 million. It depends. You know, every year it fluctuates. But mm -hmm. I've always told my athletes, why not brand yourself and get paid off of a, a, of a school that's – yeah, they gave you a free education. Yeah, but now what are you going to do with it? Turn that free education into millions of dollars. You know, mm -hmm. um, anyone – not anyone, but a lot of kids are lucky to go to college and some kids are not for free. You know, if you go, if you're getting a, a D1 scholarship and you're going for free or if even a D2 scholarship and you're going partially for free. Um, my biggest question, and I always talk to my athletes, of how are you going to turn that into millions of dollars? Because you're not, you might not play, play in the NFL. So you won't get a million dollar check at the end of the year. But what else can you do with that piece of paper to make it not a piece of paper, make it a validated check at the end of the year that you're making and banking $1 million. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's that's what we teach, you know, once a year. I just started last year. Um, uh, we had a King to King, uh, King Mentality Academy. Mm -hmm. so we try to teach the, teach the kids, you know, finances, uh, business planning, you know, marketing, branding a lot of it got cut short because of the COVID stuff and because of the bad weather up here we had a few snow days um but that is something that a lot of the guys that we train was going to so now we're going to incorporate that into our Saturday trainings of you know our half an hour mentoring break in between trainings wow so okay so that was like like an additional uh, an, an additional piece that's just that just added on why you like while you're working with them it's like okay after then we're going to get this yep. additional development Yep. So, you know, what we train on Saturdays is like our long training. It's like our two hour training. Um, I, I use that's my only day I take them for two hours. Um, but like they get a 20 minute break and this mentor and I bring other athletes in uh, that's been in the city that went to college and came back. I brought an NFL player. Uh, Trent Murphy was the first one I brought back. I've been trying to bring some other Bills players, but I just can't afford that. <laughs> You know, so, some guys are lucky they, they're well enough and nice enough to do it for free. Trent was 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 blessed enough to do it for free when he first got signed. Um, you know, so I try to bring people they can relate to, you mm -hmm. know, some people that they, they look up to, you know, and at all costs, you know. And, and I tell my story all the time, you know, and I tell – I use the situations that they see on a daily basis. Like, we've been talking about this George Floyd thing, you know, and of how if the world had the – um foot locker room culture a lot of this stuff wouldn't happen because if you look in the football locker room you got in the college you got 110 guys different races different backgrounds different trauma different ptsd different depression you know anxiety you got different playing abilities you got you got all kinds of things in one room and then you add another 15 college coaches on top of 125 people they all love on each other if we could get the world to do that and in the football locker room, if it's 25 guys, if it's 125 guys, they don't look at that race stuff. You got a few guys. Don't let's let's not be naive. Mm -hmm. But um, overall, if we get the football locker room culture in the world, we'd be a lot better. You know, and that's what we try to teach the guys. Is let's just look at each other as athletes. And if you at this school and you at that school, if you see this one slumping, man, pick him up. You train together all summer, so pick him up. Mm -hmm. So. Some of the stuff we do off the field, I think, is more key than the training stuff. Yeah, and I think that's huge just in the fact of, and I love the name, King to King, because that's what these young men are. And I, I, I really can appreciate just what you're doing because you're reinforcing that in them and then you're developing them through that process as opposed to them being called this or them being called that, but you're just giving them like that positive reinforcement just so that, that one, they began to see it. And then even outside of seeing it, then they began to actually believe it. And then they'll yeah. begin to walk into it. I think that's so essential, uh, man, because I mean, my heart goes out for our young men. Um, 
especially now, and that's why you're beyond essential now, the work that you're doing, because just like you said before, nobody's told them to take time and you know appreciate the people who help get them there. But now some of these these young men and some of these young women, you know, they they don't understand what it means to respect someone because one they they weren't taught that. And then outside of that, they might have this level of frustration because they're, 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 they're a child raised from a single parent home and because yep. whatever was said about their father from whomever. So, yep. oh. Yeah, man. Yep. Uh, and that's, that's one thing that we also do too. I also do too sometimes is sometimes when I get a lot of parents out there that sit there and watch the trainings, you know, after the training, I, t I tell every kid that if your parent came here, turn around in front of everybody and tell them that you appreciate them. Because sometimes we we take it for granted. Like I took it for granted when I was young mm. until I got to high school and my mom only was able to go to one basketball game because she was working, you know, 16 hour shifts because my dad was not around. But that one game that she came to cried my eyes out. I'm in the layup line and I hear my mom walking in talking about that's my baby. And I turn around and I'm like, oh, wow. And that was the first time even my homeboy that I've played with since third grade. You know, he was like, man, mom don't never come to the games, man. What's, what's up? And I'm like, I don't know, but I'm about to have a good night, you know, after I got done, you know, shedding some tears. But even that day, I didn't appreciate it, you know, saying, because you're in the moment. And sometimes those parents, they need to hear, thank you, you know, for giving me to practice today, get me the workouts. Because they, they want to do other things, too. And sometimes they don't. They're in a, we're all in different parts of life right now. You know, as an adult, you're here. The youth you're there, as a baby you're there, you know. So as an adult, you you try to rip and run and do stuff for the household, and you're not thinking about getting him to training. So, but when you do, man, thank her, thank him. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not, it's not. Some people don't have that. I wish I could have had my mom watch me more than one basketball game or one football game. You know, I. Some people just don't get that. So you know, that's one thing that we 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 teach as well. Like just appreciate people. Appreciate your coach for setting up that phone call, that coach calling you and saying, hey, I want to give you an offer. Mm. You, know? you know, one of my biggest things is with my guy right now, Jimmy Scott, we had a talk in, like, after football season. I let him get, like, two weeks to himself. And he's like, man, coach, I don't know, man. Like, I ain't got no offers. Like, people say I'm the best, you know, but I, I got more work to do. I said, like, yeah, you got more work to do. I said, like, but focus on what you are right now. You're Jimmy Scott. You're a kid. You know, saying one night you could go to sleep being a nobody, next minute you could be somebody. Now the guy has 13 power five offers, you know, and it's and he's and every time he gets a phone call, he's surprised, he's shocked, he's working even harder. Mm -hmm. You know, after North Carolina State called us today, he's like, Coach, I gotta call you back, man. I gotta get my weightlifting session in. I can't be can't be a slouch on the next level. Mm -hmm. You know, and people don't see that, and, that, and you know, and. You know, that those kids, they deserve to be pushed. All the kids in our area deserve to be pushed if it's from their trainers, their coaches. You know, some people had a passion, some people don't. And that's why um, I started this because my coach didn't push me. Mm. He didn't push my film. You know, I had to do everything by myself. And I'm a little older, but so I didn't have Twitter, you know, and I didn't, I had VHS tapes. We couldn't afford, I was taping over my mom's stuff to, to make a, a highlight tape to send over stuff, to send to co college coaches and stuff, man, and getting in trouble, getting in trouble because I didn't have the money. You know, now these guys could just post a link and it can get shared a thousand times. Yeah. You can go viral. Crazy. You know? Crazy. And it's, that's, they, they have a platform that they don't understand because they're given to it. You know, so what King to King, we try to tell them that the platform that you have is new. It's, it's, it, once this goes away, you never know what the next platform might be. So true. take advantage of it. Take advantage of it and ride it out, man. And let's see how many offers we can get these kids in this area and see how much help we can get coaches to look at this area, you know, and see other talent, you know, so. Where do you see King to King in five years, Coach? Man, uh, I'm like three years ahead of my game plan. So, you know, I'm, I'm blessed. <laughs> I'm blessed, man. I, I never thought um, I, I'd be at this spot. You know, like when you start a new business, it's, it's scary. Mm -hmm. Let's just be mm -hmm. honest. Everybody has all these plans and visions, and they don't get they don't they don't happen. So people stop and quit. 
you know. Um, but I, I'm I'm blessed. Right now, in five years, I would like to have like a, a small training facility. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't need it. I don't need it that be big. I just need it. I don't care if it's a box, you know, just because our we in this area we waste like five months out of the year with our winter time. Sometimes even six months. <laughs> so our kids in this area, if they got to train all year round, there would be no reason why coaches wouldn't be flying in left and right, you know, and and being seen more or, you know, getting more opportunities because for five months, they don't have nothing to do. Some of them lift weights, some of them don't. And that's why the guys that lift weights and study film for those five months, um, they get the offers, you know, they get better. Some of the guys I've worked with, we'll shovel a patch of snow and we'll do small stuff, five degree weather if we need to. it's rare that some kids do that. Don't get me wrong. It's not like an everyday thing, but some kids are that hungry at times that they would do that. So my goal in five years, somehow, some way, um, to have some type of facility, even if when I buy my house, I'm thinking about putting my backyard into turf and, you know, and putting the gate over, put a little shed over the, over the field, whatever I got to do, um, the most cost efficient way to help my athletes um, and some of the athletes in the area. That's just my goal in five years, just to be able to be a leading force of, of helping these guys um, be seen on a daily basis. Not like a, oh, I heard, you know, this one, this one guy and this now. I want, I want the whole city of Buffalo to be seen. Um, and however, I got to play a part in that. Um, I want to. Um, so slowly but surely, you know, it's coming around. You know, not just for me, but a lot of athletes, a lot of trainers in this area. You know, we just got to stick together. You know, some people can work together, some people can't. You know, but, you know, they always say strength in numbers. Definitely. You know, and, Definitely. and if, if a few of us work together that can work together, um, it'd be more beneficial for the youth. Um, and that's my biggest thing. I'm not I'm not money hungry. In five years, I just want to help every athlete that deserve a chance. You know, if it's 100, if it's five that year, whatever mm-hmm. it is, um, I want to be able to have um, – a helping hand in that however it is if it's just one phone call if it's just hey this kid need mentoring or if this kid needs you know a pair of cleats whatever it is that my part of that help is I want to be able to in five years if it's whatever it is I want to be able to help so you know Kenny King I, I want to say in five years we'll have a lot of premier athletes um you know helped on and off the field you know so that's that's the biggest thing is to help them on and off the field. That's the mission, and just want to stay on float with it. I love it. I love it. I love Coach, where can people oh, find? Uh, where, where, how can people connect with you, and how can people find out more about about uh, King the King? Um, so I, I'm on Twitter a lot. With, you know, if I'm not posting, I'm in, in I'm in coaches' inboxes. Uh, Twitter is Coach McCann, C O A H C O A C H M C C A N N nine uh this inbox me at me um and then on instagram is king the number two king and mentor um and those are the two spots i'll always be at um and then on the website uh on my twitter on the link right there to your right is my website and on there it has you know some of the work i've done some of the work i'm gonna do uh some of my athletes some of my younger guys that i take pride in my my 12 year olds and 13 year olds that's coming up, up and coming uh, and on the, and they, they'll have all the access to me if they get, get on Twitter. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, now, well, now coach, you know, I can't, I can't let you go without, without running you through the two minute drill. So we're we going to, yeah, we're going to, we're going to run through the two minute drill. Then, I, then I'm going to let you get out of here. So are you ready coach? I'm as ready as po- possibly can be. You're never ready for a two minute warning. <laughs> Long right, right. Right. Here, here we go. Here we go. Favorite food. Uh, lobster tail. Ooh. Oh, yeah, you did cook the, mm, okay, 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 okay. Um, uh, a book that you're currently reading? I'm not reading that right now. I'm on Come audio on, books. Coach. But it's all, it's all, it's all like T.D. Jake stuff, though, when I'm doing mm. the audio books. All T.D. Jake stuff. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, it's good stuff. What's your Netflix quarantine show of preference? Oh, it was Ozark, but I, I ran through that in like two days, man. <laughs> Man, 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 man. Uh, uh, all-time favorite movie? Bad Boys 2. Classic. Watched it probably 3.5 million times. <laughs> uh, what's, your, 
What's your favorite quote? Uh, always earn, never given. Mm. And what's one tip that you want to uh, get? What's one tip that you have for a student athlete? Uh, how you carry yourself is how you will be looked at. Mm. That's good. Coach, you, you have anything else? Do you have anything else to share with the people before I let you go? No, just contact me on those uh, social network platforms and, you know, I, I'll be able to help as much as I can. Can't help everybody because of time restraints and the guys that I got. Um, but I'll definitely do my best to help as many people as I can. Coach McCann, I want to I thank you for, for, for hopping on Beyond the Ball with us today. I hope you have a great, great rest of the week and continue to serve those young men well. And we wish you the best. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, Coach. Talk soon. Yes, sir.